Kundave had decided that Vanatha was the perfect bride for her incomparable brother Arulmas Hivarman. But Vanatha had only one flaw, it was her fearful nature. A woman who is going to marry a heroic warrior, who is going to have a son who is going to rule the world in the shadow of an umbrella, can she be so scared? Kuntava wanted her to change her timid nature and make her a brave and heroic maiden. That's why she made this toy crocodile game. But Kajumbalarg Kumari cleared the test with success. When Kundavadavi and Vanathi returned from the home of the child astrologer, they boarded the Anna boat. The boat went a short distance, it is customary to stop the boat at a wooded spot on either side of the river and Kunta and her friends go into the water to play. They went down to that place even today. When everyone got off, one of the women said, Oh crocodile! She shouted. Crocodile! Crocodile! She said, pointing to the other side of the tree under which they landed. She screamed. Immediately all the women joined in, Oh! Crocodile! It's scary! They shouted and ran. But Vanati, who was of a fearful nature, was not at all afraid at that moment. She didn't panic when she suddenly saw a terrible crocodile with its mouth open. Everyone else pretended to be very scared as Kundavadavi had told them, but Vanatha was not scared. Sister! A crocodile's only strength is when it's in the water. It can't do anything when it's lying on the shore. Tell them not to be afraid. Kajumbalarg Kumari said. Fuck, you wicked scumbag. You seem to already know it's not a real crocodile, it's a toy crocodile. Someone must have told you. Said the other women. I'm not afraid even if it's a real crocodile. I'm afraid of lizards and cockroaches. Vanatha said. It was at this time that Vandiyathevan came to save the women from the mouth of the terrible crocodile. He jumped from the horse and ran and threw the job. Standing in front of the crocodile and hearing the majestic-looking monkey speak, Valavarayan felt sick. He was relieved of his grievances at the home of Kutantasodhaya that she did not speak to him. But there was something about that crocodile the monstrous, open-mouthed crocodile lying behind her that was making him uneasy. What is the reason for her standing in front of the crocodile? What does she mean by not bothering about it? What is the reason for the arrow lying in the same place for so long? The young lady further spoke, Sir. In Kudantai, you expressed your regret for coming into the soothsayer's house in a hurry. We left without replying. From this you may have got the idea that Chola women are ignorant of respect. Do not think so. As the girl who came with me suddenly fainted, my mind was a little he was confused. That's why he didn't answer them. Damn it! What a sweet voice it is! Why does my heart swell like this when I hear the languages she speaks? Why does throat get sore? Even the flute, Veena, Madhalam, and Pormarusang have never made me frolic like this? Have you ever shaken me like this? If I wanted to interrupt this manga and say something, why couldn't I? Why does the tongue stick to the upper palate like this? Why has the ventilation completely stopped? Why has the flood of Rice River stopped flowing? And then this crocodile. Why is it lying idle like this? As Vandiyadeva's heart fluttered like this, the voice of the maiden was heard as if in a dream, even now you have done this thing thinking to save us Apala girls. You have thrown work on the crocodile. It is rare to find warriors who can throw the shaft so fast and without missing the mark. The girls who were standing under the tree and listening now laughed again. Vandiyadeva's dream of infatuation was shattered by the print. The magic wand that was spoken by the witch was cut as Badir. He stared at the crocodile once more. Ignoring the woman in front of him, he walked away and approached the crocodile. The blood did not pour out of the hole that Val had pierced. Then, what came? A little banana and cotton came out. Again those poor girls laughed. This time they laughed loudly. Valavaria's soul and body shriveled. He had never suffered such humiliation before. Such a celebration in front of so many women? Are these women? No. No. These are demons. They should not stand by. 
don't even look at their faces. See you. My beautiful weapon. Did this happen to you? Did such a shame happen to you? How am I going to remedy this and clear the mess that has happened to you? All these thoughts entered Vandiyadeva's mind in a few moments. If the only people standing there laughing were men, there would have been a battlefield. Those who dared to laugh would have lost their lives instantly. Their blood would have mixed with the Red River of Arisal. But these are women. What can they do? The only thing to do is to run away from them. Vandiyadeva ran and climbed on the bank of the river without even looking up at the face of Manga who upset his heart. His horse, which was standing there, also cast a spell. It seemed to Vandiyathevan that even the horse was laughing at him along with the women. So he showed all his anger on the donkey. Jumping on top of it and sitting on the head rope, he gave two blows saying Sular, Sular. The furious horse galloped along the river bank road. Kundave Prati was looking at the direction the horse had gone for a while. She stood watching until the dust stirred up by the horse. Then, looking back at her friends, she said, Girls! You don't know how to show respect yet. You shouldn't have laughed like that. When we are alone, you can laugh and shout any way you want. Shouldn't you be modest when a foreign man comes? What will that boy think of the Chola women? She said that.